In a triple threat match, taking on Sasha Banks and Bailey. And um, that match I'm actually looking forward to. The New Day, Big E and Kofi Kingston and or Xavier Woods. The champs will take on Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, the club, which they no longer call them the club for some reason, mm-hmm. uh, for the championship. And um, that's that's it. All right? And you got the Universe Champion. Oh, why did they only put one on that page? Yeah. Kevin Owens, champ, taking on Seth Rollins for the Universal Champion. Maybe the next week they'll make the Galactic Championship. I love that match, though. I never thought I'd get to see them <laughs> the wrestle each other. Galactic Championship. So, okay. Galactic uh, match. The Galactic match. Uh, all right, we're going to take a commercial break, and hopefully when we come back, we'll be on the phone with Ron Bass. So, hold on. The following announcement has been paid for by the New World Order. This is the hardcore icon, Just Incredible, and you're listening to Damage 365 Radio. Now, that's not just the coolest. That's not just the best. Damage 365 Radio, now that's Just Incredible. Superstore, selling wrestling memorabilia from all around the world, including WWE, TNA, Japan, Mexico, and the very best of the independents. They've got action figures, DVDs, autographed memorabilia, t-shirts, and more. Plus, stop in and get tickets for great promotions like UWA Elite, CZW, and many others. Located indoors at the world-famous English Town Flea Market, Green Building Booth number 35 on 90 Wilson Avenue, Manalapan Township, New Jersey. Open every Saturday and Sunday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Log on to Facebook.com slash Funkenstein Inc. for more information. Join Brandon Lewis and Christopher Scythe Bracey. Every Tuesday night on YouTube.com slash 2KW at 8.30 p.m. As they bring you the matches and moments that make 2KW Pro the heart of New York City. 2KW Pro. Your company. Your wrestling. This is Jim the Anvil Nightheart and you're listening to Damage Radio 365. Yeah, baby! <laughs> the following announcement has been paid for by the New World Order. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, and we're joined at this time by former WWE superstar, the outlaw, Ron Bass. Welcome to the show, Mr. Bass. Thank you, buddy. Glad to be here, man. <laughs> so um, I, I've been I've been asked by a friend of yours. Uh, uh, he goes by the name of Ricky O, Ricky Otazu. Yeah, I saw that post. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what's with this with Stan Hansen and uh, uh, Vegan? What is all this about? <laughs> Phil and I were doing a show somewhere. I don't know where it was. Uh, Legends up in Philadelphia. That's where it was. And uh, I noticed he, when he was ordering, he was eating all these dead gum vegetables. And I said, hey, Hanson, you grew up in Texas. What do we grow in Texas? Beef. And here you are eating all this dead gum uh, vegetables and all this crap. And I said, if you go vegan on me, and he kind of laughed, well, maybe a little. And I said, boy, you shouldn't have told me that. Oh. So everybody I've ever talked to about it, I've told them about Hanson's a damn vegan now. Can you imagine that? Oh my god, <laughs> Hanson of all people, man. I, it, that should be like against the uh, the 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 law. Any if you're from Texas, that that's exactly what I mean. It's against <laughs> the Texas law, man. I mean, just, that just don't happen. It's like it's I, like I, I, it's I think next he's gonna what, be wearing these yoga pants or what, man. Uh, I'd be like uh, you know us being from New York and New Jersey and. You know, not eating pizza. There you go. There you go. <laughs> it's illegal. It's, it's probably a no-no, ain't it? Yeah. If you don't eat pizza, there's something really weird, you know, something wrong with you. <laughs> In fact, I just had a couple of pieces of ready to go myself. Man, down here. <laughs> there you go. Um, all right. So I just want to get to the beginning with, uh, you know, because you, you uh, not not to date you or anything, you know, but, you know, you, you were back... Uh, 
in the you know the seventy early seventies and you know before a lot of televised wrestling. Like, how did like what made you get into wrestling from the beginning? Like, was something you watched? Was what was like your influence? Well, yeah, definitely. You know, anybody that gets in the wrestling business, if they hadn't watched it, if it if it ain't something they want to do, if it ain't in your heart, you're wasting your time because it's it, you, you have to live it, eat it, sleep it, the whole nine yards. So, it, it, you know, it has to be deep in you. And I was born in Texas, grew up in Arkansas, and uh, uh, the Mid South Wrestling out of uh, Memphis there was big. Uh, it started out with Nick Goulas, and then uh, it was bought out by the, uh, Jerry Jarrett. And so I got involved going through there, watching and seeing what was going on. Uh, I could have went into football, but but wrestling offered me more money at the time. And so I, I jumped on the football, and I mean on the wrestling. And you know, I never really looked back, and I, I've I've enjoyed every second of it. Uh, when I first got started, uh, I was teamed up with another, another guy named Don Bass, which you may have already seen. Yes. So I lost Donnie last weekend, man. He, uh, it, it was a sad day for us. He, he had developed melanoma, and, and that melanoma had metastasized, went into his lungs. He had uh, lung cancer, and they went in to put a port in to give him treatment and stuff, and uh, he flatlined and didn't make it, man. So... Him and I got a lot of memories going back, traveling them, with them the roads there in Tennessee, puffing on our cigars, and this old country music, and uh, really said, hey, we got it made. So uh, that's that's basically how I got started. And uh, we we left uh, the Tennessee area, we went down to, to, to the Mobile area, Gulf Coast Wrestling. At that time, the Fields Brothers was, was operating down there. And, uh, Lee Fields was the main man, but he had two brothers, Bobby and Lee. And me and Dottie went down there, and we had a lady named Ma Bash. Her name was Mae Weston. She was a former tough, tough, old-school wrestling lady. And man alive, did we, we had more battles down there with fans. Uh, people couldn't believe that a mother would raise two boys and be as mean as Dottie and I were. So <laughs> it, it really brings back some, some real, real old-time memories, man. Now, when did you um, get noticed uh, with, I guess, was the WWF, I guess, back then? It was WWF when I first okay. started. Okay. Well, what happened then is, uh, you know, through the years, I'd been making different areas. And I'd be in you know, territory, and they'd bring in Dusty, or Dusty Rose, to work with me. You know, Dusty was pretty well a big name everywhere he went. And always either bull rope or some kind of match with me and Dusty, and and so Dusty became the booker here in Florida and he asked me to come down and so I, I moved out here in Florida in 82 and I had a big big run with Dusty we drew money all over this state for four or five years and Dusty um, the, the promotion here they had kind of a little dust up and so Dusty went up and wanted to go to Carolina as I followed him up there and I really didn't like what was going on up there and so I came back down here in Florida, and Jerry Briscoe was a good friend of mine, and he, you know, he he works for Vince, and uh, we talked, and, and he said, well, let's let's go to New York. So Jerry Briscoe set me up, and I went up with Vince, interviewed Vince, liked what he saw and talked, and so that's how it happened. Uh, I was really set up through Jerry Briscoe, and uh, uh, he he set me up, and we went up there, and we had a pretty good run, but. I mean, it just you know, just looking at your your history, you know, you've you've won titles pretty much everywhere you've ever traveled to, uh, whether right. it was United States or it, you went to Japan at one point too. Yeah, we won the we won their version of the world title over there. Me and Stan Hansen did as the tag teams over there. Okay. We won it twice, to be honest with you. And uh, I would. You know, Stan went over a lot. He was over there four or five times a year. You know, you go for three to four week tours. I only went in um, the last week of March and the first three weeks of April. And uh, but I went every year with Stan, and so uh, that's how we got to Japan. But yeah, I've I've always uh, managed to be one of the champions wherever you, wherever I went. And uh, only one that didn't happen was in New York. So our, the WWF, I don't know the reason, uh, you know, politics is politics. And uh, if you don't get the right situation, it don't happen for you, you know? Yeah, I mean, that was kind of my next question. I was like, uh, 
I mean, yeah, I understand that when Hogan was the title holder, he pretty much called the shots. But even when he wasn't, I mean, there was so many opportunities, uh, either with the Intercontinental Championship or the Tag Team Championship, and you never, you never seemed to be in that picture. Well, let me tell you, I had two real bad lucks on, 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 on New York. The first one was me and Black Bart. You know, him and I were partners for down here in Florida and the Carolinas, and, and we did very well. And when we first came up there, Vince wanted us to come as a tag team. Well, Dusty had got with Bart and made him all kind of promises and different things, and Bart decided to stay with Dusty, and I went on up with New York. So that was one strike against right off the bat, that we were supposed to go in as a team. Mm -hmm. And boy, Bart has told me so many times later, he says, Rod, I should have listened to you. I should have listened to you. And then the, then the next one is, they were fixing to do a big, big angle with me and Blackjack Mulligan. And... Uh, uh, we, we, you know, I'd work with Mulligan all over the country, in the Floridas and the Carolinas, and you know we'd always done well, always good angles, and uh, so we get up there. We were setting it up where that Bart's wife, her name, uh, his wife at the time, now she's passed since. Her name was Bonnie, and she was just a real rough old country girl, and we were going to use her, using her chewing tobacco and being all this kind of thing, being my manager and and, and putting it together and. We had already started doing different interviews about it. Jack did, and I did. But Jack, I don't know if you knew Jack. He, <laughs> Jack had a temper on him, and boy, if he made a decision, you couldn't change it with a with a sledgehammer. Him and Pat Patterson. <laughs> no. Pat Patterson asked him one Jack, when are you going to lose some weight? Oh. And Jack looked at him, and I won't tell you what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I never saw Jack again. He just picked up his stuff and left. Oof. And so that hurt me there, too. So those those were two big strikes that, that, that was against me there. And even though I did get a good run with uh, uh, Junkyard Dog, I had a good run with Brutus and uh, Beefcake and uh, made some good money there. I don't regret it, but it, it could have been better. And, uh, you know, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't dwell in the past. I move forward. Now I know you, uh, you you lost that infamous match to Beefcake uh, where you lost your hair, right? Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, I made more money on that haircut than on anything I've ever done in the sport. Uh, if you uh, know, that was done on Saturday Night Live, mm -hmm. and not only did I get paid for the crowd that we drew here, and it happened here in Tampa, that was the Sundome, at the USF Sundome. <laughs> I got paid there. I got paid for Saturday Night Live. And then royalties has come in after that. And I couldn't tell you how much money that that one match has brought me in over the years. So, <laughs> you know, I can look at it one way. Hey, I lost my hair. I look at it another way. It made me a lot of money. And you know what? You can grow hair again, but money's hard to make. So That's I'll take true. the money anytime. You can grow hair, but you can't grow money. You got it, buddy. You got it. That's where I come from on that. I mean, I'm going to ask you, uh, we call it a speed round. First thing that pops into your mind uh, when we ask you the question, uh, toughest opponent in the ring? Whoa. <laughs> that, uh, that, you know, there's a several. It depends on what you want to call toughest, whether it was the hardest to wrestle with him, or whether it was you, you had better matches with. Which one do you want? You, which you, one do you, you want? Can give me either one. Or well, both. The Visa's one of the best one. That, 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 I mean, before he did something, I knew he was going to do it was Barry Wendell. I mean, oh, a lot of pleasure to work with Barry. And, and man, we did for years and, and back and forth. And, I, and and there's two others that were that were tough. <laughs> uh, one was what we, they call the Mormon Giant. Don Leo Johnson. You know, he's about six seven, six eight, big old strong boy. And he, he he was pretty hard to, to, to get entertained with. And another one, believe it or not, was wrestling too. You talk about a temperamental son of a gun. If, if he didn't want to, buddy, it wasn't going to happen. So those probably were the three that comes to my mind. Okay. Um, Hall of Fame, yes or no, Mike Rotunda? What now? Should should he be in the Hall of Fame? Yes or no, Mike Rotunda? I think he's earned it. Mike has been around and uh, and contributed to the sport.